Pixie. I'm, yeah, I, I'm like kind of, I kind of am stuck from the last thing that was said. I kind of want to respond back to it. But so, oh, to the Kansas thing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. just pretend I'm a pregnant black woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What? I, what is, what's the, remember, you're not what you feel inside, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, the reason why the argument for like gender and race is so different is because like our conceptions of what we're, gen we're a proper claim on gender and race is like radically different right so we treat race or culture as like a group identity right so to be black you have to be part like of a black parents have some sort of like black history um be part of like a black community it's more of a thing that gets put onto you based on like what your general history is and how much of validity you have to claim wait women but, everybody has a claim to women because everybody has a fucking mom and everybody has been affected by what? gender roles wait hold on but if you're black, that manifests itself in your skin color, like your Yeah, but there's color. light, there's people, have you ever heard the term white passing? No. Like albino? But no, no, like black people. Oh, who oh okay, yeah. White. Yes. Yeah. No, no. Like, like, they don't, black fish. Yeah, but they then, don't, no, no. White passing is not trying to make yourself look black or make yourself look no, white. It's, it's you, no, you are look white light. because you're black and you have a light skin. Right, you just are extremely light well, skin and you, you look like you could be white. are you 100% like... One of your parents Mixed. must be Mixed. white. 100%. Or maybe you just okay. have, what is it, like one ancestor a long time ago that was white and then it just came out in your dreams. That's happened before. Okay. So are you okay. suddenly not black because you're white passing? No, but you were arguing that it, like, it... it that the appearance is what makes you something. Well, That's I'm, what, yeah. what I was, yeah, I'm arguing, I'm saying that there's a difference between race and sex for the or like yeah there is claims. a difference but yeah and for this reason the reason why it's seen as like so outlandish if you just suddenly claim to be a black person is because we consider cultural identities group identities based on like historical claims while gender everybody has a claim to gender because everybody's been affected to gender roles everyone has a claim to gender because everybody's been affected by it oh you have to be more masculine you have to be more feminine this is what a man means this is what a woman means everybody's been affected by it not everybody has been in, you know, a descendant from slavery. Wait, oh, hold on. <laughs> Are blowing you your mind no, 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 no. here. No, you're not blowing my no. mind. Because you just said descended from slavery. Are, you think... I don't you think, think all black people are no, descendant of U.S. No, slaves because there's black not. people in, I never said that. in various regions around the world. Of course, yeah, absolutely. But the but, point is that they what? have a what is it historical claim that oh, you know, these people were viewed as black here. This is a history of this place, et cetera, et cetera. Not like oh, you know, I have no culture or background connected to it. Now I'm going to claim to be black. Well, that's what I'm saying. There has to be some. There's a historical claim there, at least in our society, that treats it that way. Okay. So that's the difference. We can talk about something else. Now. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, that was Candace Owens' argument because she was making the race comparison. I, like, I wasn't really prepared okay. to make that argument, but what, what, so what you I got? I just have one more comment, and it's not about the race versus gender because those are two very, very different things. Yeah, what, things. what you yeah. got? Mine is for you in oh. particular because yeah. you said that your view of a woman is motherhood, and there are a lot of women that would take offense to that because it's really – really painful for women that can't have kids or can't be mothers yeah. for that reason so yeah. i think that that's not a good way to identify a woman i'm we, just saying that yeah like, no that's a, a great point honestly that's like, a great point i just meant for me how i feel like um what makes me feel most woman out of like anything else and, and but but also i don't have kids it's just the thought that i want them it's, mm -hmm. it's so maybe even it's just that maybe it's like the mothering instinct i i don't have kids and i may be someone who isn't able to I mean, hopefully that is absolutely not the case, but it's just the desire to have kids, the desire to be nurturing, that's where, and I don't have them yet, but yeah. that is still what makes me feel most woman than any, like, yeah, and that's very fair. I just think those are two, like, the way you said it the first time and saying that, those are two very, very different things. So mm -hmm. that clarification yeah. pretty but much But I mean, I don't particularly in the first place have a strong opinion mm -hmm. on the transgender issue i mean in in terms of like words of it all and like the wording of it all the definitions mm -hmm. of it all like i don't really have like much commentary on that because again it's just words it doesn't really have like much well the, okay so the typical recommended go-to for what is a woman if you you say you lean more conservative right pretty center but yeah i mean i think she does she does make a good point like your ability to get pregnant doesn't like if a woman had like a hysterectomy She's still a woman just because she can't have children. I mean, I, 
what I would recommend, probably your strong, strongest definition for what is a woman is just an adult human female. Mm -hmm. I just think in general, everyone should worry less about other people's genitals. Period. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. what does it matter? It's not on your body. It's on theirs. Like if you're not sleeping with them and well, the, it's like, it's just not your business. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like if you're business. having like an intellectual conversation about it, like truth no, is of kind course. of a big deal. I mean, we can have the conversation, but I think like the worrying of it of like, oh, are they trans? Are they this? Are they that? What are they? Are they woman? Are they a man? I like, I don't think that we need to be having That's even like in depth conversations about shit. somebody else's body and somebody else's decision and how they feel. Cause I don't think any of us can dictate how anyone else feels. I think it's more of a yeah. constructive conversation or debate if what you want to talk about is something like policy related. Like if you want to ask like a have a debate about like a question that um, I don't think it's a stupid question. Like what is a woman to you? You're asking, you know, for someone's mm -hmm. like ideological take on it. I just think it's more fruitful to have a conversation about like how should the law define it or Absolutely. how should it like apply in society. I just think that's a bit more of like interesting and constructive of a debate to have because it could mm -hmm. have real consequences versus like mm -hmm. I mean I was a philosophy major in college all you know half of philosophy philosophy gets hated on because like you know half of it is just arguing about a definition of something that's completely <laughs> abstract in the first place it, there, uh -oh. it doesn't have a <laughs> physical reality you know what I'm saying I mean biological reality like that's different whatever I'm not even trying to get into that I'm just saying it's a philosophical argument we are trying to ask when you ask people like what is the what is definition of woman to you? It's not you know a what philosophical I mean? argument. Well, it's very relevant. It's not a philosophical it's, it's argument. I think, what, I think it's very on. simple. It's very yeah. simple. An adult human female. Cool. Okay, so, but I think okay. what everyone's it's, trying to did say you check, did you is, check if I had a dick before point. I came in here? So here's what one does thing. that? No, did you did you check my chromosomes? She, this is yeah. No, this but like valid. but you most still call me a woman. Did I? I don't. Did I? I would call you a woman, but <laughs> you I. You would call I me a woman. I don't know if I called you a woman. Oh, hey. But I. I okay. Did in you, any case. Did you check? But that. Oh, <laughs> Brian. If you line. Okay. Here's oh. the thing, though. If you lined up, a hundred women and a hundred men, with pretty accurate certainty, you would be able, like, very easily, be able to be like, and oh, excuse me, females and males. Let me clarify. You'd be pretty easily able to assess. That's a woman. That's a man. Yeah, until they start changing their appearance, and now not necessarily. Uh, I, there's a lot of passing people. Like, the point is the fact that somebody, even just one person, passes already throws a wrench into the argument. Because if it's supposed to be this pure biological thing, then passing wouldn't be a question. So it would just be when I was getting my master's degree in education, I had to take Where's lifespan. <laughs> right. I need to come I back, had Candace. To take, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, lifespan development. And when we were studying lifespan development, we were um, studying transgender and transgender people just in case the, there's this minuscule um, statistical possibility that a child might reach out to us as educators. I was an actual teacher for children. So we studied that. And there's a tiny, 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 tiny minuscule percentage of legitimate transgendered individuals in our society but now due to all of this this trendy stuff now everybody's jumping on the bandwagon now you've got kids in school when they're supposed to be studying saying oh i identify as a unicorn you have to call me a unicorn today and if you don't you've got a, a principal breathing down your neck saying that you have to that's happened to my son so that's where to me I, i'm starting to see mental illness happen. I'm starting to see a trend of let's just jump on this, whether it's true or not, and let's put push buttons and let's get attention. But I mean, being transgender is actually already studied in psychology. It's gender dysphoria, and it's a real thing where they legitimately feel like the opposite sex. And I'm not saying that you're wrong with people maybe jumping on the bandwagon, but in the United States, I believe I could be, I don't know the exact statistic, but I believe it's 0.04% of people in the United States are transgender. So, Legit. Yes. Right. And that's, that's a very, very, very minuscule amount of people. So, and I don't believe in transition I think it should be up to the parents what they want to do and having them you know 
go to therapy and go do those things in order to figure out whether it is just like a bandwagon thing and they're just hopping onto it or if they legitimately are and that it is something that they need to process and go through and talk to someone and maybe they are somebody that needs to transition later in life and that should be their choice. The bandwagon stuff is scary, especially when you've got California trying to create laws where if your five-year-old comes to you and says, I feel mm-hmm. like a boy today, but that but biologically it's your little girl, that the, the lawmakers would actually start making you put into motion biological changes and changing their hormones. Okay, but I think that there's like a huge misconception with that because there's so many steps before it comes to hormone blockers or anything like that. Like they have to see a psychologist, they have to go through therapy to determine if they actually are transgender are so i think that's like just that's like a huge misconception in the media and like propaganda of them putting that out there you are 100 percent right because it is they are blowing this out of proportion and scaring parents into believing that that's what's actually happening that they are like the second that your child says that they're the opposite gender that they feel that way that they're immediately being sent to doctors in order to completely change their sex and that's just not happening I hope, I hope that that's like the case that it's like not actually that you know you have to you're legally required to go straight to hormone blockers but even if it's the case that the first thing is oh put them into therapy even if that's like the first tiny step it does I don't I'm pretty sure there's no law if you're six-year-old 12-year-old five-year-old comes to you and says i want to kill myself today no parents are re- legally required to put their kids in therapy Maybe so i'm kind be. of confused <laughs> i know so i'm just saying like, like, are we really curious about the kids best interest because i feel like there should be there should have been tens of if that's if that's how radical we want to go with it why are there not like hundreds of other laws already in there about like if your kid comes to you and says I want to kill myself, you're legally required to put them in therapy okay. i feel like on. i, I feel like it's on. because moving they're on. grooming moving on